BMW E46 Auto to 6-speed manual installation. My summer car is a 2000 BMW 330ci convertible. It has about 90,000 miles on it. A year ago, while backing out of my driveway, my automatic transmission lost reverse. The automatic transmission in that year of vehicle is known to be pretty weak. Some didn't even make it to 100,000 miles before losing reverse. And so after doing quite a bit of research, I decided to put in a manual transmission. A few of the reasons that I chose the manual transmission is it basically has much better power, especially off the line. It's a lot quicker. It also provides a better feel while you're going through the turns so that you have more control while powering out of a turn. I am getting a little bit better gas mileage when I keep my foot out of it. One of the main reasons is I wanted to future-proof the car. I really like the convertible and the cost of owning it will be quite a bit less in the future. If the transmission has a problem again, we're just talking about changing out a clutch disc and throughout bearing. And the last reason is the cost. I checked around and got quotes anywhere from 3000 to 10000 at BMW. And so let's look at the costs of the installation. I was able to shop around at Reckon Yards all over the West Coast using car-part.com and found a treasure trove of car parts for my BMW. I ended up finding a six-speed within about 10 miles of my home in a local wrecking yard. And for 800 bucks, they even delivered. My transmission came out of a 5 Series BMW. After some research, I found that the 6-speed that would work in my car is a GS6-37BZ. The 6-speed was shared in both the 3 and the 5 Series. In the 3 Series, they didn't go to the 6-speed until after 2004. I think some late model 2003s may have had it as well. I picked a lot of parts up off of eBay, which seems to be a pretty good source for 6-speed linkages, shifters, clutch master and slave cylinders, and connector pins. There are a couple other parts to be aware of. You'll need the 1,444 centimeter drive shaft and the rear transmission uh, bracket for the transmission to mount to your car. Do your research and you'll find other small miscellaneous parts that you may also need that may be worn out on your current car. So my total investment with tools and fluids is just under $2,000, which may seem like a lot, but I did buy it in pieces. And I also found several good deals on eBay, like the Vallejo clutch kit that I ended up using. And so I went to the six speed and actually cut the cost to install a transmission into my car in half versus just putting in a rebuilt automatic transmission. When I decided that I was going to do the installation myself, I looked to two really good online YouTube resources. One is Shop Life TV and the other is The 50s Kid. Both of these show complete installation of a manual transmission into the BMW and they're both E46 5-speed trans swap videos. The purpose of this video is not to show how to install the six-speed manual because you can watch either of those other two videos to see how that's done. The purpose of this video is to explain what extra you get with the six-speed and using the basic installation from those other videos, you can install the six-speed and have all the benefits of the six-speed. The links to both Shop Life TV and the 50s Kid are in the comments below. So let's talk about a few differences between the five speed and the six speed installation. Uh, one of the main things you'll find is that the linkage is different. Uh, the way that it connects to the transmission is slightly different, has different brackets and pieces. And you'll wanna make sure you get all of those pieces. I had to actually go to BMW to get a few of the small bushings that were $2 each and a couple of other small pieces for it. 
the transmission mounts themselves are different. On the 6B, the mount is shaped slightly differently. It can use the same rubber uh, mounts for it, but the bracket itself is different. The drive shaft length is different, and it is a 1,444 centimeter drive shaft, which you can easily find at a wrecking yard or using the car-part.com site. Those are the three main things that come to mind when I think about the parts that I put in that were different than a five speed. You may find others, but make sure that you look at the shop life video. It shows an explanation of all the parts and pieces that you need for an installation. The 50s kid video is also a good reference for those parts and pieces. And one of the big differences that you'll find between the five speed and the six speed is the gearing. And you'll see in the 50s kid video that he changes out his differential later to get the correct low first gear uh, with his five speed. He was having trouble with running out of first gear before he was even moving forward very far. And so he ended up switching out his differential in order to get the first speed to act correctly. I was a little worried about this happening with the six speed, but after driving the six speed now for almost six months, it's perfect. The first gear is great. Uh, I don't run out of it too fast. It is quick, but I don't run out of it. I can easily spin the tires in first through third, and I just have gobs of power, and every gear seems to feel just right to me. One thing I found, too, is with the six-speed, I'm able to get pretty good gas mileage in six gear. It's actually pretty amazing. And so looking back at the installation, I do have a few tips for you while installing the six-speed. Uh, depending on your year model, the programming can be a little bit tricky. Um, my best advice is to get an old laptop. That's what I did. I bought one from a friend for 50 bucks that already had XP on it. You're going to need that in order to load the BMW software. And you can buy the, uh, the cable and it comes with the software that you need for about 25 bucks on either eBay or Amazon. Check out the 50s Kid or Shop Life um, videos and they'll tell you exactly what you need for programming. One problem I had in my swap out was the exhaust bolts. They were rusted on. The rest of the exhaust looked great. Didn't see very much rust under my car, but those bolts were just baked on. And I used a torch and I still couldn't get them to come off without actually breaking the bolt right in half. So I cut the bolt short and ended up drilling them out and installing new bolts. That was just a lot quicker than removing the exhaust manifold and gaskets, etc. And saved me quite a bit of time. I did go with the Vallejo clutch and it works great. It saved money. Mine is quiet and smooth. There are some people that say they hear noise. I'm just not hearing it with mine. Mine shifts, runs perfect. Highly recommend the Vallejo and you can cut your costs down. I recommend you buy your tranny off car-part.com to get one near you uh, at a decent price. If there aren't any near you, they can do a nationwide search. You can have one shipped to you. It'll still be cheaper uh, than getting it through most parts houses. And I was really lucky when I found mine. It came out of a 5 Series that had under 90,000 miles on it. The tranny looked to be in mint condition, and you may find the same thing out there. Car-part.com also had pedals and shifters and all different kinds of parts. And you can always call the record yard that you're buying the tranny from or other ones to find those parts. If you can't find those parts, then go to eBay. That's where I found my shifter. One last note on the tranny is make sure you get one without the sequential gearbox. That was a special electronic gearbox that you don't need and it'll be major pain in your backside to get one. Another thing I did with mine is I dumped all the fluid out, even though it's supposed to be lifetime fluid. I dumped it all out and exchanged it with some Redline. You can use whatever brand you like, but the Redline has really good reputation, and so that's what I used. The tools I used, I bought some off of Harbor Freight, and one of them was a brake line bleeder. It's a hand pump. I used that on the clutch. It was great because then I was able to get the air out of the lines uh, by myself, which worked really well. 
some other tools I got from them was a real low profile floor jack and uh, some jack stands that were extra heavy duty and fairly tall. I was able to get under the vehicle easily with it and with the floor jack I was able to lift the tranny no problem by myself. Instead of using the clutch lines that came from the factory from BMW which are really expensive and have all these weird angles and bends, I got a flexible line, it's about 30, 36 inches long, to go from the pedal to the tranny for like 40, 50 bucks off of eBay. At first you look at it, you think this isn't going to work, but it works great. I uh, highly recommend that one. Then you're not making all kinds of bends and having to try and fit all these different pieces together. It's just one piece works great, less chance of leaks. Uh, one other thing that I can recommend, and I definitely recommend this, leave in the small inline clutch fluid valve that's down by the tranny. It'll give you much smoother shifts. You will thank me for telling you that. Mine shifted pretty hard until I put that in, so I highly recommend having that piece in. That piece will come with the tranny most likely, and if it doesn't, you're gonna wanna buy it. And so I drove my car for a week or two before reprogramming it. Uh, the reason being, I was having troubles finding an old computer that I could put XP on so I could reprogram my, my system. Um, the car shifted horrible. When I push in the clutch, it would over rev. Uh, the revs wouldn't drop real quick. And when you reprogram it, it gets rid of all that. It cleans it right up. But for those two weeks, I was very unhappy and was wondering, why did I do this? After the reprogram, it shifted perfect. Uh, the revs drop real fast when the clutch is in and my cruise control works again. And so it's been almost six months and I have a few final thoughts about the car. Um, the six speed is just awesome and I'll now keep this car for years to come. The six speed is so fun to drive, especially going through the mountains, that I can't imagine buying anything else at this time. The car is so much quicker and it just drives nicer. I do get better gas mileage uh, when I keep my foot out of the gas. The car can now spin the tires, which it never could before. And so it's pretty tempting now and then to just get on it and go quick up the street. I try not to, because again, I'm trying to conserve gas. With the five speed, it's recommended that you change out the rear differential to get correct gearing. With the six speed, you can run the rear gears the way they are. The gearing seems to be perfect, and I really like the stock six speed shifter. It's low, has a real short throw, and it gives me a really nice feel when I'm shifting gears, going through turns, or quickly going up the street. And the main reason, again, why I went to the six speed versus the automatic is I now know that I'm pretty future proof. If the clutch goes out on me, I know I'll most likely just have to put in a new clutch disc and throw out bearing. So upkeep on the car will be pretty inexpensive. And from what I'm seeing, these clutches tend to go 90 to 100,000 miles pretty easily, depending on how you drive. So I'm future proof. And after all the research I did on the automatic, losing reverse like mine did, and having other problems, I'm really happy that I've gone to a manual transmission. It took a day or two to install, mainly because I broke off exhaust bolts and had to drill them out and resize. And my girlfriend asked me if I would do it again. And I tell her in a heartbeat that I would definitely do it again. I am a mechanic from the aircraft and auto industries. And if there's anybody out there that would like help with one of these installs, if they'd like me to do it, you can go ahead and contact me at the uh, comments below and we'll set something up. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel and you'll notice that my channel's a little bit different than most. Yes, I do hunt Bigfoot and that's why it's named the Bigfoot Research Project. I have several videos up and yes, I've videoed uh, sighting and have some other documentation. So if you're interested in any of that sort of thing, feel free to click on it and check it out. Hope you have a great day. Take care.